7 to 10 week pregnancy update. I, I'll i start at week 7. So I already updated you on like week 6. That's when I started getting sick. And um, week 7 through 10 wasn't much different. I spent most of those weeks just throwing up and being nauseous. It was awful actually. And I have two kids now. My two girls. We are foster parents, but we are currently taking a break from foster care, and we are in the process of switching agencies, so we are having to pretty much redo everything. Um, we transferred the paperwork that we had, but there were still some things that the, agent, the other agency didn't send over. So we're in the process of switching agencies, so it's taking a little bit longer, but that's okay because I really needed this break, and I've been really, really sick for the last several weeks, so... Week six, we visited our family in North Carolina for my cousin's wedding, and I went ahead and told the family that we saw then that I was pregnant. I did start getting sick and throwing up, and I wasn't sure when I would see them again to tell them in person. So I went ahead and told them, and I will link that video below, and at the end of this video, if you'd like to see some of their reactions, we didn't get everybody's reaction on camera, but... We did get a few, so if you want to see that, it'll be linked below and at the end of this video. And then at week seven was around Thanksgiving, and we actually went to New York. Well, we stayed in New Jersey um, to visit my mother-in-law. She lives in New Jersey now, and we went to visit her, and she took us all around New York City for like five days, and I'll have a vlog of that up soon, if not right after this video. So if you want to see that, then please subscribe if you haven't already and stick around so you can check out all those fun vlogs. But at week seven is when we were in New York and we told my mother-in-law that I was pregnant and my mom and stepdad and brother and his girlfriend came along with us and we went all around New York City and, you know, did all the touristy things that we could fit in but it was so incredibly cold I mostly only threw up in the morning while we were there but I did stay pretty nauseous most of the day I did good as long as I kept something on my stomach but as soon as I got hungry I would start to feel incredibly sick so that was no fun and on top of that I was having insomnia already and just having trouble sleeping just because I felt so crummy and just yucky so those first few weeks were pretty horrible but I expected that because with my girls I stayed so sick the entire pregnancy with no relief until they were born honestly I threw up even right before I gave birth to Bradley like maybe an hour before so you know I'm kind of I was kind of expecting that that's just how my pregnancies go but at the same time it's just really difficult the more kids you have while feeling awful the harder it is to keep up with everything you know with Reagan with that pregnancy I just had Briley and Briley is seven years older than Reagan so she was already doing a lot for herself and um, she was pretty easy kid she occupied herself most of the time so if I felt awful or needed a nap I could very easily do that, and that's really not the case with Reagan. She's younger, she needs a lot more attention from me still, and I can't just go take a nap or go lie down. I have a lot more responsibility on me this time with two kids, and, you know, there's just not a lot of <laughs> chances for relief. Um, I was finding it really hard to get up in the morning and take Bradley to school because I was so sick in the mornings, and I would have to get up earlier so I could get all of my throwing up out of the way and then get her up and get tell her to get ready and make sure she had everything she needed and then get ready up and get her dressed and ready to go and then get myself ready to go and it was just it was really difficult to drag myself out of the bed when I felt so bad and it was like 
if I laid in bed, I would be fine, but it was like, as soon as I stood up, I would start throwing up. Like, it was, I knew as soon as I got up, I was going to be sick. And I would throw up, and I would be good for a little bit until I got something on my stomach. As soon as I ate, I would feel better, but nothing sounded good to me. I was not having cravings. Most food made me extremely nauseous just to think about it. And what's even weirder is I drink a lot of coffee and tea. I'm a coffee and tea lover. And the whole beginning of this pregnancy, the smell or thought of coffee or tea made me so sick that I could throw up without even smelling it or seeing it. Just the thought of it made me so sick. If you hear something in the background, that's Miss Reagan playing in her room with her dolls or slime. Hopefully just dolls. <laughs> But, um, yeah, so I was just feeling awful, and, yeah, that's really all I have to say for week 7 through 10. We did go to New York for a week. I'll have a vlog of that, and then weeks 8 and 9 were pretty uneventful. I stayed in the bed as much as possible, took the kids where they had absolutely had to go, and then... I was really tired or really nauseous, so I either stayed in the bed when I could or, you know, took care of my responsibilities and then just tried to get through it as best I could and just just suffer through it, really. But at the same time, I was really happy to have those symptoms because with my miscarriage, I was throwing up from weeks 5 to 8. And then I lost the baby at week 9 or 10. But I thought my nausea was just getting better, but it had completely disappeared. And then I realized once I found out I had miscarried that that's why my symptoms had went away. Not because they were getting better or I was getting relief, but because the baby had passed away. So with each pregnancy since then with Reagan and this one, to have those symptoms and then if they went away, which... They did that for me in the first week, like I threw up a few days in a row and then I stopped for a few days and I was like, oh my gosh, I hope everything's okay. Luckily, I had a fetal Doppler and at week 8, we started hearing the heartbeat and I wish I had taken a video of that. I'll probably um, try to insert a clip of that because I can still use that. Um, but the baby had a strong heartbeat and I highly recommend getting a fetal Doppler for you mamas who are worried about that it just gives you some peace of mind I wouldn't use it every day but um, maybe once a week just to give yourself some peace of mind um, knowing that everything's okay in there at least as far as the heartbeat goes and um, yeah so at week eight we heard the heartbeat for the first time I found it myself fairly easily and I just think it's amazing how small they are when they get their heartbeat and you can hear it so early it's just technology is incredible so I highly recommend getting a fetal Doppler if you're expecting and early on in your pregnancy if you need that peace of mind because it really helped me with this pregnancy and the last one just to have that peace of mind to be able to hear the heartbeat and know that baby's okay in there if your symptoms are coming and going or you just need to hear it just to reassure yourself that everything's okay. And, um, so week nine was pretty uneventful. Around week ten, I had my first, um, appointment with my midwife, and I absolutely love the first midwife I met. There are three in the practice I'm going to. I'm going to in-town midwifery in Atlanta, and I should be delivering at Atlanta Medical Center, and I'm pretty sure they have a water breast center there, so, and I'm going to attempt a VBAC, so I'm super excited about that. I hope it's successful, and if, I've had one VBAC, um, but I did not do the VBAC water birth, so if you have any tips, if you've done a water birth, comment below with your experience, if you recommend it or not, all that, but I really want to try for a water birth this time because I've given birth through C-section and vaginally. Um, with a V-back, but I've never done a water birth, so if I do a water birth, that would be like all three ways to give birth, so I'd love to just experience each one, and um, I just hope it works out. I'm really excited about it, and yeah, that is 
pretty much it. The first appointment, I felt so stupid, you guys. I got there and I realized that my appointment was actually the next day, but I'd been so sick. Somehow I'd gotten it mixed up in, when I put it in my phone and I got the reminder and I guess the reminder was for the next day and I ended up going on the wrong day, but they still saw me, but I felt terrible about it. And you know, just pregnancy brain already and yeah, so I was there a day early and I just felt <laughs> really silly, but you know, it happens. And they were nice enough to see me because I do have to drive like an hour and 10 minutes to Atlanta to this midwife practice and I was just praying they would see me so I didn't have to come back and drive another hour in Atlanta traffic the next day because my dumb self came on the wrong day. So yeah, they were nice enough to see me, thank God. And yeah, I absolutely love the first midwife I met. She was super nice, great bedside manner. And I had both girls with me and she was so nice to them and my husband and it was just really nice. And they just did, they took some, like a blood sample, a urine sample, all that jazz, let me hear the heartbeat again. And, um, you know, measured now my one complaint about this appointment was i had to get a pap smear it's been three years so i had to get a pap <sighs> that's never fun but i had a student midwife do my pap smear and this is the first pap smear i've ever had where i bled and i bled really heavily after this pap smear it was pretty painful and i mean i think she did a good job it was just <laughs> It was kind of painful, uncomfortable, but it had been three years since I'd had one. And thank God you only have to get them every three years now instead of every year. But still, it was just kind of alarming how much I bled after. I mean, you never want to see blood when you're pregnant. It's just, it's kind of frightening. <laughs> so, um, yeah, but that was the first pap smear I'd ever had where I bled heavily after, and I just was not a fan. So... Other than that, though, the appointment went really well. We went and ate after, like, Ruby Tuesdays, and I will say I'm having aversions to meat. Like, I don't want anything to do with meat this pregnancy, which is no surprise because that's how I was with my other pregnancies. Other than the baby I miscarried, I did crave hot wings with that baby, but with the girls, I had meat aversions pretty much the whole pregnancy, and, um going about the same this time I don't want anything to do with meat and I'm kind of craving like unhealthy food so I'm trying to eat better those first few weeks I was craving yogurt and milk and like dairy food but that's all that sounded good to me like nothing else sounded even remotely edible so I was just trying to like force myself to eat um, I would just make something and just kind of force myself to eat so like I said nothing sounded good to me and yeah I just really needed to keep nourishing myself but again I just the I had to eat and I was hungry but the thought of food made me so sick like it was it's just been a struggle <laughs> struggle bus over here but yeah that is pretty much everything for week seven through ten that I can remember and um yeah just please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell if you'd like to get more updates on this pregnancy and go on this journey with us to see how it goes. Everything's going well so far other than, you know, the nausea and vomiting. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so that's all I've got for you and I will be back soon with more pregnancy updates. I probably won't do like weekly updates just because I just don't have time for it and I don't feel like enough changes week to week to do a weekly update. I'll probably just do every two to four weeks do an update. But um, yeah, if you'd like to see those, then please don't forget to subscribe and stick around for that. And we do lots of other kinds of videos on this channel. I do mommy content, cleaning, lifestyle, um, vlogs, travel, you know, anything that we're doing that I find interesting or I feel like anyone else would find interesting or helpful, I try to share on this channel. So if you're interested in that, then please stick around. So anyway, thank you so much for all of your sweet comments on my pregnancy videos. If you're one who's left one, but I've gotten a lot of sweet comments. So I really appreciate you leaving those and um, just 
anything that's helpful that you've left. I appreciate it so much. And thanks again for watching. I love you and Jesus loves you too. God bless you all. Bye.